Welcome, I'm Georgie Frost. Today I'm talking to Sebastian Olbert and Phil Rue from global strategy consultancy LEK Consulting. Since 1983, their worldwide practice spanning the Americas, Asia Pacific and Europe has guided leaders across all industries, from global corporations to emerging entrepreneurial businesses and private equity investors. Key to that growth is digital transformation. Welcome to you both. Let's start with the basics. What do we mean by transformation? Um, business transformation can be seen as a survival elixir for, for companies. So the speed and need to, to transform is increasing with the ever faster changing environment, be it business, social or, or, or political wise. And if a company is not adapting to that, it will go out of business. So even Charles Darwin mentioned that it is not the strongest species who will survive, nor, nor the most intelligent one. It's the one who is most adaptable to, to change. So we think that um, over time, most or even all companies will transform, if not in what they do, at least in how, how they are actually doing that. And setting up a proper business transformation can be seen as a significant acceleration um, of change in order to, to achieve your targets. So be it business or financial targets, be it to react to competitive pressure, or be it to uh, tackle internal performance issues. Okay, that's one part of it. But then if we add the digital, what do we mean by digital? Now, that's a great question because I think digital means different things to different companies. We, we typically try to think about digital as, as four potential different types of of elements, all that need to create value for a business. So you, you have digital customer engagement. How, how are you using digital tools, data, and other ways to engage with the customers, acquire customers, uh, take customers on the journey? Um, the second one is digital products. How are you creating new products? And that, and that can be in any industry, all the way through to heavier industries, industrial industries, where you might not think digital has a place as a product, but you can see that in remote maintenance and, and lots of other opportunities. Then you have digital ways of working. Um, this can be anything from automation of, of processes through to uh, just the way we engage. You know, we we're in a, live in a post-pandemic world with high levels of virtual engagement. So that, that's, a, that's a big part of it. And then the, the fourth one is, is digital operations. So how are you using digital to automate or improve the, the effectiveness of, of your operations. Okay, putting those two parts together, what is digital transformation? Yeah, so, so a digital transformation is, is effectively transforming the business, leveraging these different digital dimensions, ultimately to create value. I mean, the, the, the basic economic principles are not different here. This is a transformation to create value for a business, for shareholders. So. What that really means is a digital transformation is about understanding how digital fits into your strategy and how it's going to enable you to reach your objectives as part of that strategy. So what does a digital transformation entail? What does it mean for a company to go through that process? It's quite a complex undertaking. I mean, if you, it's quite interesting. If you look at data on productivity of, of particularly Western economies, despite the vast improvements in digital, in technology, the productivity has not changed much in that same time frame. So that, that suggests that it's a real challenge to really get the benefits of what digital can give companies. And that, and that, comes in, uh, that challenge comes in many different ways. Um, it's first of all just leaders really understanding and crystallizing what does digital mean for my organization. That's not always easy given you know there's so many different ways to define digital um, things can get stuck uh, quite early on in, in, in your innovation of those um, of those digital ideas um, that's often because it's very difficult sometimes to understand what's the return on investment of that digital you, you, people can become impatient with innovation quite quickly and then there's the classic um, transformation challenges have I got a good plan? Is it clear? Um, as I execute that plan, have I brought people along? Are people clear on how am I going to actually um, get the value? Am I seeing the benefit arising? Um, 
at the end of the day, I mean, the data we've seen suggests, you know, a good two thirds of all the transformations will fail because either the plan is not good enough or the transformation execution has not been given enough commitment, enough resources, uh, and that t starts from the leadership all the way down through to engaging people in the organization. Goodness, two thirds fail, that's a, that's a big number. So how then do you achieve success and you don't become one of those bad statistics? Yeah, so what we've found through, through, through our experience is you've really got to think about three elements here. So, uh, and we call it the winning triad. It's business strategy, as, as we've mentioned before, it's people and it's, and then it's obviously the technology as well. So it's a combination of those three. So when we talk about business strategy, so as I said, that that's about being really clear how those different elements of digital fit into your strategy, right? What are your where to play choices? So how does digital affect that? Is it going to change the kind of customers I target? Is it going to change the markets I enter? Is it going to change what I offer them? How to win? How is digital going to enhance my value proposition? How is it going to make my my offering more attractive? I could be an industrial company and I am now offering um, remote training and remote install. So Peter, product, uh, you know, the customer gets his product quicker yeah. and they pay less for maintenance and things like that. Um, and how to configure. So, so how am I using digital to enhance my organizational effectiveness? Um, how is it changing the, the roles my, my, uh, my talented people play? Is it less about uh, the, the, the very simple manual tasks and they can be automated and now I can lift up my employees and give them more interesting tasks? Does it mean I can reduce costs? Can I, can I create um, value somewhere and reinvest it somewhere else? Um, so all of those three elements are really critical. On the people aspect, this is the really critical part. So I, I, it comes down to uh, people first. It's, not, it's going to live or die by whether you can get people behind it. An open and innovative culture, uh, the ability to fail, um, uh, in, embracing partners, so don't think you can do it all yourself. Leverage the partners out there that you have. Um, IT really is a business partner. Right? It's it's a strategy led thing, but you really need to be closely tied to your to your IT people. And finally, there will be some key elements of the organization you'll need to adapt: governance layers, incentive structures, um, and and the way you make decisions. Um, and then on the technology side, I mean, that's not a silver bullet. You can't just find a piece of technology and it, and it transforms your business, but it is important. So we shouldn't forget that selection is key. So it really comes down around a business needs first selection of tools. You don't, you don't go for the shiniest, coolest tool that's out there. You say, what will, what will really meet our needs at a cost that means the return gives this gives you the opportunity to have sustainable use of that technology. If it's going to break the bank, it's going to fail. But don't but that at the same time, don't be afraid to to think to think quite radically and, and, and adopt tools that are, are very, very new or have never been used in your industry but have been used in other industries. Uh, take take that uh, take that leap of faith. Okay, Sebastian, where does LEK fit in then? How do you help your clients achieve success? Yeah. Um, so we can help a client to actualize the organization, the so meaning to be adaptable for the, for the required change. So what do we mean with that? It is for us a combination of three. So you need to innovate, you need to operationalize, and you need to enable the organization. So looking first at the inno uh, innovate piece. So we there again see three major ingredients, which is first, that you need to set, set direction and create the required mindset within the organization. Um, second, that we ideate, as, as Phil mentioned, so you need to have the right business ideas, maybe also some new bus, uh, digital business models, some new pro, uh, process solutions. And third, you need then to pack it into your digital strat uh, strategy. 
So regarding setting direction and creating the mindset, it happens both on the leadership and the organizational level. So on the leader on the leadership level, you need um, as change is driven top top down. You need first of all create the awareness that that there is a need to change among the entire leader leadership team, and you need you need to create commitment in order to drive the required change. So it isn't sufficient sufficient as the um, if the CEO is the only one who really wants wants uh, wants a change, right? So you need to have the entire leadership team being aligned and standing behind the change because it needs to be driven across the entire organization. Um, so once you have created this awareness on the leader on the leadership level, you also need to define an aligned direction. So a digital north north star, right? So so having a digital north star, then you need also kind of a point of of departure. So where I'm good at today, where I have my, my key capability gaps, in order then to identify what is my, my ambition level, what are, the, what are the most urgent gaps, gaps to close, because this will then drive again the um, initiatives across the organization. But it is not actually sufficient to just looking at the leadership level because you need the broader organization because this this is your engine of ideation and the key success factor for that. Um, what we identified is that of course there are classical top down change change um, management approaches, but they fail fail a bit short within the digital transformation because digital transformation on the um, level of the employees has a lot to do with fear, right? Fear for something new, fear if I'm capable to really um, um, hold, hold, the, hold the, uh, the uh, speed of change, what to do with the technology. So what you need to do it, you, you need to make the change tangible for the people. You need to bring the new pos possibilities to them. Even, uh, for example, via digital boot, boot camps, what we did at a large industrial comp company, really um, showing first of all different batches of uh, people, the possibilities the digital technologies bring, bring to them, and then working with them how to apply it in their daily, daily life. And then let them generate the business ideas, helping them with defining the business cases, defining the actions in order to get it uh, to real life. And if you do that, you bring it to the organization and you will receive great examples and results within your organization. So that's a point around um, setting direction and creating awareness. Second is then ideation, which I already touched on. Um, but very important is that you provide the necessary environment that uh, people can also play around with their ideas. So uh, we all know these uh, things around uh, freedom, freedom to, to fail, a failure culture and, and, and so on. Um, so you need to support that regarding um, uh, KPI systems, regarding um, organization structures, whatsoever. So it is very, very important that you create this level of Ex, uh, ex, exploration within your um, your organization, um, and it is very important um, because otherwise, as you mentioned, Phil, um, lead leadership uh, quite 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 fast. Get a bit impatient with results. So the ideas you have always need to follow a strong business business case, and they need to pay into your business targets. Otherwise, you lose the connection between the business achievements you want to have and the ideation you, you are doing. And once you have created that, which is a combination of ex exploration and ex uh, exploitation of the strengths with, you have within the company, you can then bring it to the digital strategy, which should um, follow your digital North Star earlier defined. So that's a bit the, the package around Innovate. So Phil, how do you bring all the ideas and learnings to life then, so that a company can create value at scale out of this? 
Sure. So the next two steps would, would then be operationalize and enable. So operationalize is where we're really then turning this into really a classic transformation program. Because I think uh, digital should be a continuous journey. It's go it's going to live beyond any immediate program and, and really change the DNA of a business. But to really kickstart things, start to change um, the way people work and, and really change the mindset, you need some sort of forcing mechanism and a classic change change management transformative program is where you start. And, and that doesn't look and feel that different to any classic change program, right? You, you need to put that structure around it, the governance, um, uh, process, targets, tracking, all of that, all of that stuff. One of the unique elements that you will be adding though are, are digital playbooks. So you start, as Sebastian said, you're starting early on in boot camps to get people to get over their fear and, and, and sort of potentially the, uh, that learning curve of digital. And then the next step in transformation is a key part of your, of that sort of program that you're putting in place is to really build that uh, that knowledge in the business, those how-tos, those cheat sheets, all, all those that, that give people that confidence that they they have something to refer to as they are in their early days of of leveraging digital um, in, in their day-to-day. -day. Um, beyond that, it's just a behavioral change program, so there's a lot of reinforcement and things like that, and I said, I said we'll elaborate on the enablement bit. Yeah, exactly. So. Um as as you mentioned, it is at the end of the day, it is really a large scale behavioral and and cultural change program, and a key element to it is enablement of the of the people. So enablement has um, again two elements from our point of point point of view. The one is around training, change management, communication. So uh, it's very important to know that the key driving force for the digital transformation is your existing organization. So the people you have today within the organization. So you need to really enable them to, to train them in order to be able to deliver on the future re requirements. Of course, there will be new capabilities that can't be trained um, because you also can't, uh, can't, uh, can't change in, in Penguin to an uh, crocodile or something like that, but uh, whenever you you don't have that, you need to hire new capabilities um, from from the market. So be it digital science, science scientists, maybe all the people who are really experienced with software as a service con, con, uh, concepts, focusing on recurring revenue generation, or be it all the new new, uh, new lead, uh, leadership styles. Um, a second element to that is that you need to um, to create the right environment. So, meaning you need to touch on the um, on the governance structure, right? So, while it is quite easy um, um, to have pilots running um, within a distinct area of the organization, but not affecting the core of the organization, you can include there new ways of working, cross-functional cross teams, um, stepping away from existing KPIs and using o o o um, OKRs or something, something like that. So this happens within, within a protected environment, right? Um, but there normally people are, are just temporarily assigned to and they enjoy the new agile way, way of working and they might also get very, very good um, Refuse performance refuse there, but then after a while they they come back to their original organization, right? Where you still have often a quite hierarchical structure, mm -hmm. and um, if, for example, a bonus bonus system is not changed, and you have been for nine months in a pilot, and then you return to your original organization where you get refuse from. Uh, it will be quite uh, yeah, frust frust frustrating for you, right? So um, if you just live in the pilot world, you create a kind of a two-mode operation within the organization and it's very, very difficult and often frustrating for the people to move from one world to, 
to the other. So at the end of the day, what you need, need to do is also to break through the organizational ceiling and also changing over, over time the, uh, your, um, yeah, the organization structure of your core. But many companies, if not all, are running pilots, and it's usually recommended to try these things out before rolling it out to the organization. So what's wrong with it? There is nothing, nothing wrong, wrong with it. So um, we also re recommend to do pilots. All right. So you do, you need this ex, uh, ex, uh, explorative thing within your organization. But as I mentioned, um, if you just keep on running pilots without touching the organization, it will, it will, it will never, never, never be achievable to transform the entire organization. So. The pilot world is easy, but the hard thing is actually to scale a digital transformation, to scale new ways of working across the broader organization. And so there is nothing, nothing wrong with pilots. And we also recommend that companies should, should do pilots, right? So because you need to have an environment where you can test, test ideas and, and explore things. However, as mentioned, pilots are, are protected small area of the company and the real challenge is in scaling the new ways of ways of working the new mindset across the organization so very often company leaders think if i just do more and more pilots introducing more and more new ways of working mm -hmm. introducing new ways of thinking within the organization then from 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 the new ways of working the processes will change and then the culture will change at the end. So it is an outside-in cultural change approach and this will fail. So in fact, it is the other, the other way, way around. So you need to really start from the inside out. So starting with the culture, working over, over the, pro, the processes and then you can act, act on it within the organization. And um, I mentioned it earlier, but um, we call it, you need to break through the organizational ceiling. So you need to get away from the two mode operation, at least if you want to transform your entire organization. Of course, we also made good, good experiences with setting up new small organizations like speedboats alongside the uh, existing mother, mother, uh, mother ship. Um, this also works over time. But or, or or for a certain time, but if you want to really transform the entire organization, you also need to 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 tackle the organization. I'm wondering because you both mentioned culture. Then, as a yeah. client, what's it like to work with Lek? So the value proposition we have is that we're combining uh, strategy expertise with with really sector knowledge and functional expertise. Um, we're very much focused on the strategy and and value creation. We really do it with you, not to you. So it's very collaborative. We really get to know your business and, and, and help you understand how, the, how digital is gonna really work for you. Um, and we do that by pulling together a team across multiple dis di disciplines um, within, our, within our sector practices, within the organization practice. So bringing the organizational experts within our digital practice. And, and external experts where we need to, so we're really bringing you the, be the best of breed um, and pulling that together, including helping you select the right IT um, providers ultimately uh, when, when at the right point in time. And we're just a very easygoing uh, uh, and nice bunch of people, so we think that matters when you're, when you're doing a change program and, and really having to get to know and, and work alongside employees at, at all levels of an organization. We've covered a lot of ground. Uh, give us some key takeaways, if you would, for our audience. So the key takeaways are digital must enable strategy. So that's very, very important. Second is, as we mentioned, digital needs to be defined clearly. So what do we mean with that? And we talked about the digital pillars earlier. Then the pace of transformation needs to be high without losing the organization. But there is an imperative to really hold um, against the fast-changing environment. 
So we think as LAK, we can really help companies because we will um, hold focus on the value creation, on the business side of things by understanding the technology and, of course, the people side. And we will help you with engaging the organization on the leadership and the organizational level. We are capable to um, support you with setting up an over, overarching digital trans transformation program and we can drive change from top to bottom within the organization plus also help you to build up the required cap capabilities that you as an, as an organization can drive the change from the inside out. Sebastian Albert and Phil Rue from LEK Consulting, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you very much.